Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to TradeStation. This is Michael Burke. I'm Vice President of Client Training here at TradeStation, and I want to welcome you to another edition of The Art of TradeStation. This series of events is designed to highlight some of the more powerful features and customization capabilities of the TradeStation desktop trading platform. And today's event will showcase some custom futures trading tools and utilities that I use in my trading. These are primarily informational in nature to help me avoid making trading mistakes, but I'll also share with you my commitment of traders indicators and some tools to help you explore futures spread trading. We have a lot to cover. I'll probably go a little long today, so I apologize in advance. The link will also be available on YouTube with the archive video. And of course, you have my email address, so if you get stuck or have a problem, just shoot me an email. Keep in mind that the following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols and trading ideas discussed are for educational purposes and are not recommendations. Active trading is not suitable for everyone and you can find additional disclosure information on the TradeStation website. If you're new to TradeStation and looking to get up to speed with the different platforms, TradeStation Securities is now hosting a daily training event getting started with TradeStation on our affiliate, YouCanTrade.com. Uh, every day there is something new to learn. You can ask questions, watch archive videos, there's downloads. Uh, check it out uh, at the link on the slide there, and it's free to join. Oh, and by the way, on the Getting Started channel, I just posted my four video learning course on technical analysis in TradeStation. So this is included with the Getting Started um, channel membership. It's free and uh, it covers all the basics of technical analysis from what is candlestick charting all the way to support and resistance. So check it out. It's uh, four short videos and it'll get you uh, it'll get you started on your path to mastering technical analysis. And, and once you're ready to take your trading with TradeStation to that next level, you can check out and join our new online masterclass. Uh, so now you get all the same great advanced training that we used to offer in our in-person masterclass from the comfort of your home or office. And there's events every day. Uh, of course, you get advanced platform training. There's Q&A sessions. There's access to advanced courses like technical analysis and strategy trading and easy language and it's all included. And there are some exclusive special events throughout the month as well. And exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. So check it out. There's a free 14 day trial and then it's just $59 a month after that. Okay, so in the zip file that I, uh, I passed to you, there is um, a number of files. <clears throat> there are some workspaces that you can open. These are TradeStation workspaces, but before you open the workspaces, make sure that you install the ELD file. So the ELD file is a specialized um, type of zip file just for TradeStation. Once you click on that, it'll start TradeStation and it'll start an import wizard. So you import those tools and then you can open the workspaces. Okay, our agenda for today. Futures trading tools and utilities. So the first couple of tools that I'm gonna show you, I created to help me reduce trading errors. Um, especially when you're trading some of the different commodities like, like coffee or cotton or lean hogs or corn, any of those types of commodities. They all have very unique and uh, different session start times and end times. They all have different month expiration codes. Uh, they have different, you know, first notice dates and expiration dates. So to help me avoid making a, a silly mistake like putting on a, trying to put on a trade or close a trade and the market's already closed or putting on a trade too close to first notice date or expiration date, I created a set of tools that uh, has all of that information just right there with the chart that I'm looking at. And I'll show you that it's called Futures Info. Another way to kind of help me reduce errors is to understand, you know, what is the actual dollar value of a particular price move for a particular future. Every future has a different price value. And so I, I created a tool that allows me to measure what would the, the one contract dollar value be if the market moved from this point to this point. And uh, I'll show you that as well. 
Uh, there's a couple of simple things like I, I want to look at the the bid ask spread. I want to know what the bid ask spread is in real time. How many minimum moves is it? What is the cost of that for so many contracts? Uh, I'm going to show you my commitment of traders uh, indicator. It's based on what the commercials are doing. Commitment of traders is this great data stream that comes from the CFTC and all the all the big traders uh, for any particular future must report their net position each week. And the CFTC, compi the CFTC compiles that information and provides it um, and, and we capture that data, put it into our data network and you can look at it historically. So I'll, I'll show you some of the tools uh, that come with TradeStation around that and some custom tools that I wrote for that. And then for fun, I put in um, one of my volatility valuation tools. What this does is it looks at the volatility of a future and it tells you the dollar potential of that volatility. So I look at things like average true range and the, the range of a price channel and then I multiply that by the value of the future and it tells me what the dollar volatility is for, for each future. And if you look at that in radar screen, you can quickly rank and see which futures has the, the biggest dollar volatility risk. So maybe, you know, you have a smaller size account. This will kind of point out those, those contracts you probably shouldn't be trading right now because the volatility, the dollar volatility might be a little too high. And, um, and along with that is I've been trying to get um, my, my margin, my future margin indicator uh, working in radar screen. I finally did in time for this presentation. So I'm going to give you my, um, my margin indicator that calculates and shows you the margin for all the futures in radar screen. That's a cool tool. And then I combined that tool, the radar screen margin, with the volatility valuation to calculate an indicator I call bang for the buck. So if you take the dollar valuation of the volatility of a future and divide it by the margin, you can see which future will give you the most dollar volatility action for the lowest margin. So it's an interesting concept. And finally, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about future spread trading and some tools that will help you start exploring that if that's an area of futures trading that you're, you're interested in going into. So lots to cover. Okay, so reducing errors. So over the years, I've made some silly errors that if I would have just taken 10 seconds to look at what the expiration date was or the first notice date is or when the session expired, if I just took a minute to look at that thing, uh, I would have not made the, the, the trading mistake. So to avoid that, and you know, it only took about 30 of those mistakes before I finally wrote these tools. But the point is that I wanted something that I could put in a chart that would instantly tell me everything I need to know about that future before I make a trade. And that's called futures info. So it has things like, you know, what is the dollar risk to a trade? Uh, what is the front month contract? What are the month codes for, for a particular future? Expiration and first notice dates, of course. Session start times and end times, of course. What is the current margin rate at TradeStation for that future? And, and some interesting uh, price, volume, and open interest patterns that you want to look at. A lot of times you want to kind of determine what the front month is on your own. Now, a lot of people you know, think that there is a fixed date that every future rolls over, and, and that's just not true. Every trader actually can pick when they want to roll over their futures. And, and sometimes there are you know, what I would call pseudo official dates when that happens. But really what it is, is you want to trade the future that has the action. You want the, you want the future that is trading the most open interest, the most volume per day. And that's what matters. And so I'll show you how you can determine that for a, for the, a few futures that for each contract. Okay. So this is futures info. It sits on the right hand side of your chart. You insert it just like an indicator and it has two tabs. It has a futures info tab, which is the first tab here. And then it has a futures chain tab, which you see over here on the right. And first of all, it starts out by telling you what is the nature of the future? What is the point value for each contract? So this is crude oil. 
So if you if you buy one crude oil contract, you're actually controlling 1,000 barrels of oil. So the point value, a one-point move in crude oil, is worth $1,000. A two-point move in crude oil is $2,000 for one contract. If you're trading three contracts, then you would multiply that by three, and the indicator actually does that for you. It tells you what the minimum move is in dollars. So crude oil moves in pennies, so every penny is $10 per contract. You can see that right here, the minimum move is a penny. And then I calculate what the average bar value is for that chart. So if you're on a daily chart, it looks at the range, the average range for the last 30 bars, and it multiplies it by 1,000 for crude oil or whatever that point value is, and it tells you what the average bar value is. So if you, if you think about that, it's a, it's a great, again, another type of measurement of volatility. So if I'm looking at the range of the bar, for the last 30 bars, the average bar has a, a high and low range of about, in this case, it was $1,700 when I took that screenshot. So, and it's all relative to the bar interval. So if I have a one minute bar, that's gonna be a much smaller number. And if that's a monthly bar, that's gonna be a much bigger number, right? But it tells you what the dollar volatility is of the chart that you're looking at right now, the, the whatever interval that is. We have the, the session time. Session time is really important. You need to know when the market opens and when it closes, obviously. When the market opens, this is green. And then as it gets closer to the, uh, the session end time, it'll turn pink, kind of to warn you. And then when it's five minutes from the session end time, it'll turn red to really warn you. And then when the market is closed, it'll turn gray. So that background there determines the, the time to, to the session end time. You can see the exchange that it trades on and the month codes. So crude oil trades it trades in every month, so every month code is there. Next, we pull the margin rate off of the TradeStation website. You see the initial margin. If there's day trading margin, you can see what that is. Uh, this was back in February when I took this screenshot. So my guess is that crude oil is a little higher than this today, but that's, that's what it was at that time. Here you can see the last trading dates. So there are four different sets here, and that's because there are four different scenarios. Uh, the first scenario is what is the first notice date and last trading date for the symbol in the chart? And that's the first two numbers you see there. Then based on the volume, uh, we estimate that the front month is in green. And the current month, if it is not the front month, will be here showing you pink. So this means that this contract is still trading. It hasn't expired yet, but it is not the front month. So this is one of those tools that can help you avoid making that mistake. And then it shows you what the next month out is, which is nice to know as well. So that's the futures info tab. On the futures chain tab, I put the next four contract months out and what the last current price is so that you can see if it's forwardation or backwardation going for the next four contracts out. And same thing with the net change. Typically, the front month has the most volatility, has the biggest net change, but not always. And, and sometimes the current month isn't always the front month. And so that's why the information here at the bottom shows you what the current volume was for today, what the previous volume was, and what the open interest is. So you can very quickly see where the action is, what the current month is, and then trade that front month. Okay, so that's futures info. You insert it into a chart. It sits on the right-hand side of the chart, and I'll show you that right now. So let's go to TradeStation. There we go. And so here, this is crude oil. You can see that it is just a couple of minutes to uh, the session end time. So it's in that, that bright pink to warn you. And it sits just right over here on the right-hand side. There's all the information that we look at. You can see the, the, the current um, expiration dates and first notice dates for crude oil. Crude oil is a little more expensive today as margin uh, than it was back in February, as you can see here. If you click on the futures chain tab here, we can see exactly what contract is currently the most active, it's, it's October, so V is October, 
and we can see the previous uh, volume and the open interest right there. So everything you need to know here. So notice this uh, average bar value. This is something I, I really like. Um, I, I like to know, you know, what the nature of the future is as far as the, the risk. What is the dollar risk of trading this? So this is a daily chart and the average bar high to low over the last 30 bars had a value of about twelve hundred and fifty dollars. So that's that's good to know. I know that this bar, each of these bars is about twelve hundred and fifty dollars for each contract. Notice that if I change the trade size up here, it adjusts the margin, it adjusts the point value. So I can have a more uh, practical use of this tool for the number of contracts that I, I trade. If I change this to a, a 15 minute chart, you can see that the average bar volume value now is volume, average bar value is $183 on a 15 minute bar. It's kind of interesting, right? All right, that's Futures Info. And Roger, it is not available on 9.5. I have a version of this in 9.5, but it does not have the margin. The, the, margin, um, the margin doesn't work in 9.5. There's been some changes to the website and I can't get that to work, but everything else works in 9.5 except the margin. If you send me an email, I'll be happy to send that along. Okay, measuring price movement potential. This is one of those um, very similar to what we were just talking about where what is the dollar value for a particular bar, right? Over some number of bars, so whatever the interval is. So in that same light, I wanted to create a tool that allowed me to measure what the dollar potential was from the current price to some price level that I'm, I'm thinking about, maybe as, a, maybe as a profit target, maybe as a stop loss, but I want to measure what the dollar value is of a future from this point to this point, or what the potential is for a range, a support and resistance range, something like that. So that's what this next tool does. It, the indicator, when you insert it into the chart, and by the way, you can use this on any asset class. So this is, I'm showing it to you here as part of the futures presentation, but actually you could drop this indicator onto any chart, any symbol, and it will measure the dollar potential from the from the, the last price to, to these two lines. So when you put the indicator into the chart, it draws these two yellow lines. You can put your mouse on it, grab it and drag it to wherever you want, and it will recalculate and show you the price potential from the last price to that, that point. Oh, and you also have the ability to put in a trade size. So right now, by default, it's long one. So it'll calculate uh, how much either positive or negative it would be from the current price. If you, you can change that trade size to whatever your trade size is. And if you're short, it'll also reverse it. I'll, I'll show you that input here in a second. So actually, let me, let me stay in PowerPoint for just a second. We'll go back to trade station in a second. So this is the indicator. When you put it in, it draws the two yellow lines. And you'll notice over here on the right, there's a label that shows you what the dollar potential is from the last price to that line. So this is gold, one contract of gold. If gold were to go from where it is here, 1950, to my line of about 2069, that's a $11,000 move per contract for gold. So that's well within the range of the last 20 days. Typically, um, you know, you can you can also see the difference here which is the, the difference between the high and low yellow lines that you're, you're dragging and moving around. So that's the potential of that range from those two support and resistance lines. So that's the idea. So in TradeStation, you'll notice I have one line here. Um, sometimes when you put it on the chart, the scaling is off a little bit. So if you move your mouse into the Y scale, you see how the cursor changes there? Everybody see that? If you left click and hold, you can actually change the scale a little bit, and there's that other line. So here now I can grab that, and I can move it to whatever price I want. This is today. So you can see from that low to that high, that was about $1,250 today per contract. 
So if the market were to move from where it is right now, if I was long one contract and it moved back down to that line, that would be $1,100. And if it moved up to back up to that line, that would be $150. And you'll notice that little one there is the trade size modifier. So if I right click and go to studies and edit studies, here you can see the, the different tools that we've been talking about. There's futures info. This is levels calc. If I click customize and go to inputs, I can say, okay, my trade size is minus three. So I'm short three contracts of crude oil. And so now if the market were to move from there to there, that would be a $330 profit. And if it moved up to that line, that would be a $450 loss. So it's just a, it's just a tool that you can use to measure in dollars, uh, the value of any asset, stock, futures, options, anything. Okay. Um, so that's futures levels calc. So real quick, I also um, have a, um, I have a, a tool that helps me look at the bid ask spread. It shows me what the bid ask spread is in minimum moves in the chart, and it also shows it to me in radar screen. So I'll show you both of those tools. Um, the idea here is just a, a sanity check that I'm trading the right contract. So typically, most futures have a tight bid ask spread, usually one, two, you know, minimum moves. If I'm trading some farther out contract, or I'm trading a contract I shouldn't be trading at all, maybe it is, um, it's way too far out, or maybe it doesn't have any liquidity, or for whatever reason, corn is like that. So corn, you know, some of the, the more popular, you know, contracts to trade in corn, for example, like December, but if you try to trade some of the other contracts um, that are still active, most of the action is still in, De in the December contract right now. And so you might pick a contract contract that you shouldn't be trading or doesn't have a lot of liquidity. The bid ask spread might give you a hint of that. So it's just a, a second check or a second sanity check that I'm I'm trading the most liquid future that I should be trading. And in radar screen, I calculate the dollar value of that for some number of contracts, just so you have a again, you have some idea of what the cost of trading that future is if you're if you're placing market orders or stop market orders. So when you insert this into the chart, it puts a little text object right there just to the right of the last bar with the number of minimum moves that the current bid ask spread is. So right now, what we want is we want it to be one, right? That is the, the minimum bid ask spread that we can have. So there's one minimum move bid ask spread, and that's what that shows us. Now you can set an alert inside of that indicator that says paint that little yellow one paint it magenta or paint it another color if the bid ask spread is greater than three. So that way, if you're just, because you sometimes you get used to seeing something, right? And if it's always yellow, you may not pay attention to it. But if the bid ask spread were to go over three, then I would change the color to magenta and that'll get my attention that, that I need to pay attention to, okay? So in radar screen, if you look over here on the right, here's a list of all the futures. And it shows you the spread in real time and the number of minimum moves. And then over here on the right, it shows you the dollar value of that minimum move for each future. And so if the bid ask spread here, you can see heating oil is four minimum moves. That's $16.80 per contract in the bid ask spread. And you know, there are, you know, you can see when the market is closed, sometimes these bid ask spreads can get very wide. Very often, this is just an indication that that market isn't open. And again, that, that, that can be useful as well, right? Okay. In TradeStation, this is what it looks like. You can see that little one right there. And it changed, just changed to two, crude oil. And so since crude oil, uh, one minimum move is a penny, that's $10. So every time the bid ask spread is two, that's $20. And if I right click, here in radar screen on that bid ask column, I can go to studies and edit for all symbols. Here on the inputs tab, I can change the alert, the number of ticks for the alert, 
and the trade size. So if I'm, if I'm constantly trading three contracts, I might want to change this to three so that I can actually see the representative cost of that bid ask spread in the number of contracts that I trade. Okay? That is the bid ask spread. So those are the informational, well, that's the first part of the information. Those are the first part of the informational indicators that I'm going to share with you. But let's change direction a little bit and talk about some analysis. So as I said earlier, the commitment of traders is this unique data published by the CFTC uh, where big traders re must report their net position, whether they're long some number of contracts or short some number of, of contracts. And there are three types of traders that have to report this data. There are commercial traders. We'll talk about what that means in a minute here. Large speculators. These are people who are typically taking the other side of the trade of the commercial traders. Not always, but generally. And then small retail speculators. That's you and me. And our brokers have to report our, our net positions each week. Not individually, but just as in, in general because we all, all fall under the threshold for reporting as a large speculator, and none of us are, are probably commercial traders. This data is <clears throat> parsed each week from the Commitment of Traders report. Our, our system automatically grabs it and turns it into data inside of our network, and you can access it historically within a chart or radar screen. Okay, so in the futures world, there are generally three categories of traders. And the futures world is dominated by commercial traders. These are the people who do most of the trading on every commodity, every market in the futures world. So commercial traders drive the futures world. These are traders who trade on behalf of some business or institution, typically hedging a commodity that their business owns or uses to create product. So if you're a gold miner, you have gold in the ground, you may use futures to hedge the price that you're gonna sell that gold for. And if you're Kellogg's, you might use futures options to hedge the price of corn that you're gonna use for your cornflakes. So if you're a business or an institution, you're gonna use futures as a hedge as a tool to help you make your company more profitable, to help you hedge against high prices or low prices. Large speculators don't have that same interest. They don't, they, don't have, they don't have anything in the ground and they're not making a product. They are simply trading to make a profit on price movement. So those are large speculators. Those could be large prop trading firms, large CTA firms, that kind of thing. And then small retail speculators are you and me. We don't meet that threshold for reporting. So if the commercials drive the futures markets, I want to do all my analysis on the commercials. And so I created a tool which is called the commercial ribbon. Uh, it's an interesting indicator. It doesn't plot like most normal indicators. It simply has um, two, two basic uh, elements and those elements are either blue or red or or in this case cyan and magenta <clears throat> if the commitment of traders is reporting a bullish or bearish mode in two ways first i look at the commercials long term are they net short are they net long uh, overall and that's just kind of a long-term sentiment or bias that i look at and so that's the bottom of my indicator is that long-term bias it's important to understand that generally commercials are oppositely correlated to the price action. So even though they're most of the volume, if they're short, that is generally good for the market. The market is generally moving up as commercials are getting more short. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when commercials are long, that's usually bearish. The market is usually moving down. So the more bearish they are, I'm sorry, when they're bullish, when the commercial traders are bullish, 
that's bearish for the market, right? So that's the idea. When they're bearish, the market's going up. When they're bullish, the market's going down, oppositely correlated. So the bottom of the indicator is showing us what that long-term bias is of the commercials. Are they long or short? Are they bullish or bearish? Not, not are they bullish or bearish, but is the market bullish or bearish based on what their commitment of traders is telling us? And then what I want to look at, though, is I want to know whether or not the commercials are getting more bullish or are they getting more bearish? Because we will see changes in the price action based on whether those commercials are changing their net position a little bit. And you'll see that when I show you the chart. So let's look at that. Okay, so the indicator we're looking at here is the commercial ribbon. That's the big bright bar across the chart. And, and this is a weekly chart of copper. And, and the, by the way, the commitment of traders data is, is weekly data. So it doesn't come out every day. It comes out once a week and it gets put into our system once a week. So this indicator is applied to a weekly chart. And so I want you to look at the, the indicator right below my ribbon for a moment. This is an indicator that comes with TradeStation. It's called net position. And basically it shows the three different types of, of traders. Blue is commercial, green are the large speculators, and red is the, is the, is the small specula speculators, you and I. And you can see their net position. This is the number of contracts right now in copper that these different traders are either long or short. So the commercials right now are short about 36,000 contracts. The, the large speculators are long about 33,000 contracts. And then you and I are about 2,000 contracts long. And if you add up the large speculators in this case, and the small speculators, that equals the number of contracts, obviously, that the commercials are short. So when the commercials are short, that is bullish for the market. So my indicator here at the bottom, you see my indicator is broken up into two sections. The bottom section is that long-term bias. They're short, so that's bullish for the market. You can see that here. You can see the price action there as well. So that, that's definitely bullish. So the top of my indicator here, though, is the short-term directional bias. And what that is based on is it's based on the slope of that net position of the commercials. So when the, when the commercial slope is turning up, right, it's turning up, it's becoming less bearish, more bullish. When it's less bearish, more bullish, that's negative for the market. And that short-term indication there is turning purple. You can see that in a couple of different places here. So notice here, the commercials actually cross above that threshold and become, they become net long, right? That is bearish for the, for the market. And you can see that during that time, this time here, the market kind of moved sideways. And then of course it fell off a cliff in, in March like everything did, but, but that's the idea. So my, my ribbon has two elements. The bottom element is the long-term bias, long or short. And then the top element there is the short-term momentum of whether or not that the commercials are getting more bullish or they're getting more bearish, depending on the slope of that blue line. Actually, I'm working on a new indicator, which I'm sharing with you here, which is a weighted commercial bias. So basically what, what this indicator does is it does the same thing as this indicator, except that it weights the bias of the commercials by the total number of contracts being traded by, by the commercials. So right now the commercials are short 35,000 contracts, but my guess is that um, the commercials are trading many more contracts than that, and I'll show you that. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking that slope of the commercials and I'm dividing it by the total number of contracts that the commercials are trading. That gives me a weighted version. So the idea here is that if they are more bullish or bearish as a percentage of the total number of outstanding open interest, that's more relevant than if they're just a small percentage of it. I, I'm still experimenting with it, but I'm going to give it to you to, to play with. So that, that indicator at the bottom is included 
and it's just a weighted bias of the of the of that long-term bias so you can play with that let's go to trade station so this is the workspace that we were currently in if you look in the bottom left this is the art of trade station and this is futures trader tools so that has the futures info and and it has radar screen and it has a, a bunch of different things this is the commitment of traders workspace and you can see that it has our our ribbon and it has the the net position that comes with trade station and then this indicator here so as i was pointing out this is copper and the commercials right now are short about 36,000 contracts but what is the total number of contracts that they're trading that's an important number that's what this indicator is, is trying to measure so if i right click into the chart i can go to actually let's go up here right here i can go to studies and add study and there's an indicator that comes with TradeStation which actually does this. It is the total position for each of the three types of traders. So if I click OK, I can add this. Let me just change the style a little bit so it's a little easier to see the commercials. So there you can see that the commercials are actually, the total open interest for the commercials is 190,000 contracts. So if you think about it, the, not all the commercials, of course, are going to be long. Not all of them are going to be short. There's going to be some combination there. Same thing with the speculators. Not all of them are long. Not all of them are short. But in this case, out of the, out of the 190,000 contracts that the commercials are currently trading, 36,000 of them, which is about, that's about 20%, are short. So when you net out all the longs, all the shorts, the commercials are currently short 36,000 contracts, which is about 20% of the total open interest that all of the commercials are trading. So a lot of really interesting data here. And, um, and taking that percentage, I use that percentage and I weight the bias of the long-term bias of the commitment of traders value. Okay, so this indicator also exists in radar screen. So the 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 um, the commitment of traders ribbon that you see here is also reflected here in radar screen. No numbers; it's just two colors. So the base is the bottom here, which is the long term sentiment, and the score is the is the sentiment up above here, or the short term momentum of uh, of the commercials. So basically it just gives you a, a, a little indicator that shows you what the commitment of trader bias is for all of the different futures, which is kind of cool. Just at a, at a glance, you can see where commitment of traders are, are, are you know, bullish or bearish based on, based on these rules, based on my commercial rules, right? So that's the idea. So how can we use this in our, our trading, right? So the data is great, but how do I actually use this in my trading? Um, and so before I start that, let me, let me just say that um, in my view, in my opinion, commitment of traders works better on commodity futures. Things like gold and crude oil and copper and corn and meats and all the softs, coffee and cotton. Those commodities are driven by people who are either making those things or have those things in the ground or are using them to create product. And that is what really drives, in my view, the commitment of traders data. That's what makes the commitment of traders so valuable. I think it's a little fuzzy when you start talking about fin financials. Who are the commercials and, and who are the large speculators? And and there is there's certainly rules for that and i've seen those rules <laughs> and um and it seems a little convoluted to me it doesn't make a lot of sense so i'm not sure that i'm not sure that commitment of traders is as strong a tool as it is with commodities so certainly you can look at this on the e-mini or you can look at it on bonds or you can look at it on currencies but in my view i would I'm suspect that this data um, doesn't really reflect much of a difference between what a commercial is and what a large speculator is. You may have a different opinion. I'm sure there are a lot of people who do, 
have different opinions than me on this, but that's my been my observation. So it's just a warning. Just be careful when you're using this data uh, on some of the financials. In my view, this is not an entry or exit tool. This is a this is a, a bias in the market. So it's it's part of a story. If I'm going to make a, tr a trade, a long term trade in a commodity, this is just one of the pieces. So, you know, I might be looking at seasonality, I might be looking at technical tools, and I might be looking at commitment of traders so that everything lines up. I, I don't want to take a, a short position if the commitment of traders, you know, is, is definitely bullish right now or I, vice versa. So, and as I said, remember that the commodity prices tend to trade opposite to what the commitment of trader commercials are doing. So just keep an eye on that as well. And of course, my ribbon measures the slope of the commercials, that net position on a shorter term basis. So in other words, it's just looking at a three bar momentum of that net position for the commercials. And if it's starting to move up, then I know that the, the, that the commercials are getting more bullish or less bearish. So, oh, and the other thing to look for is inflection points. So this is an interesting piece of commitment of traders that not a lot of people talk about. But if you look at something that has been very bullish or very, you know, bearish for a long period of time, and they cross over that zero point where they be, they go from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish, those inflection points can be interesting um, events to trade. There was one in gold uh, earlier last year. So take a look at that chart and, and you'll see that. So I know some of you have come in a little bit late, so let me put in that zip link in the chat for you. There you go. And of course, you'll be able to get that same zip link with the description of the, the video on YouTube. Let me just show you real quick that, um, that inflection point in gold that I thought was interesting. Here, it's right here in July through October last year. Notice that <clears throat> if you look at if you look at gold, um, you know the miners are always hedging their their gold in the ground. And so you look at gold; it is always the commercials are always short. It's always bullish for gold. And and so here in July through October of last year, it was interesting. <clears throat> gold made this run where the open interest for the commercials almost and, and it, it did peak above zero a couple of times where they went from net short which they're always net short to a little they went net long here for a, a short period of time and that's the kind of inflection point i like to look for and then look for a new direction right so here we had this downturn for a while everybody was getting you know bearish on gold and as soon as the commercials started you know buying gold contracts the market turned right back around and then the commercials started hedging again and drove the market back up interesting interesting kind of price action here so look for those kinds of inflection points Okay, I'm going to quickly go through this next topic. <clears throat> it's very, it's something we've already kind of talked about a little bit with Futures Info where we're measuring the, the volatility value in dollars of a bar. So this is the same thing. I, I want to measure the dollar value of volatility and I'm measuring it in two ways. I measure it in the 20 bar average true range. So true range is a two bar pattern. And so I'm averaging that two bar pattern over 20 bars multiplying it by the point value and I get the volatility in dollars based on average true range. <clears throat> and then I want a longer term volatility measure and I use a price channel for that. So a 20 bar highest high lowest low price channel, I calculate the range of that price channel, multiply it by the big point value again, and I get a dollar valuation of the volatility of a price range over 20 bars. So those are the, those are the two concepts. Um, and these are uh, these are radar screen indicators 
for the this is a radar screen indicator it's not a charting indicator <clears throat> and then as I as I mentioned earlier I've been working on getting the margin for each future as a, a tool in radar screen so you could put this indicator on radar screen and instantly see the margin for every future the initial margin the maintenance margin whether there's day trading that kind of thing and so I got that working and then I combined that that margin indicator with that volatility indicator I was just talking about and that creates an indicator that I call bang for your buck and so what it does is it measures that dollar value of average true range or a price channel and it it divides it by the margin so you end up with a percentage of how much volatility you can get for how much margin it's going to cost to get it and you can rank the symbols, the future symbols, based on the biggest bang for your buck. So I get this much volatility for this amount of margin. And, and that's the idea. All right. So this is, this is the two indicators that, that I'm talking about. So on the right, you can see the dollar range value for each of the futures. We calculate average true range, multiply it by the point value, and so that's the volatility value in dollars for one contract, of course, uh, for average true range or for a price channel. So if you think about the highest high and lowest low for the last 20 bars for, for the E-mini, and you multiply that by 50, that means that the last 20 daily bars had a range or a volatility of about $1,000 for the E-mini. That's the micro E-mini, by the way. So if you multiply that by 10, the big E-mini is $10,000. So the highest high and lowest low over the last $20 was a range of $10,000. That's pretty interesting. And if I divide that number by the margin for the E-mini micro, I can see that I'm getting a, a percentage of 77%. So what that means is that the margin is costing me 77% of the volatility. And I can do that for the channel. And I can do that for the ATR. And what makes those two indicators, well, what makes the bang for the buck indicator work is this new indicator that I'm adding to this pack, which is the futures margin. So basically, it shows you the initial margin, maintenance margin, uh, if there's a day trading rate, and, and what that day trading rate is, and when it was last updated. So this is something we have to talk about, this updating. So when does this get updated? So that margin indicator allowed me to create the bang for your buck indicator. So that's, that's the idea. All right. So so bang for your buck and that, that margin indicator. Those, those are not going to work by themselves. Because what they're doing is that they are reading a file that was put on your computer locally by the futures info indicator that's in the chart. So the futures info indicator goes out, it goes to our website, it grabs the margin and brings it back into your computer. It just does it once per day, by the way. So it's not a lot of overhead. It just takes a couple of seconds. And it puts a file on your computer that radar screen reads for this indicator and for bang for your buck. So if these values are zero, then you have to, that, that'll be a clue that you have to go back to the chart and run the futures info in a chart once or open it, open that workspace first. And then these, these values will populate. Sometimes you have to refresh the, the indicators using control R and that'll refresh the values, but futures info has to run first. That's, a limitation that I have not been able to overcome yet, uh, but that's that's the way it works. Make sure that you run the futures info indicator, and then you can run the margin and the bank for your buck. All right. So the last topic of the day is futures spreads trading. So futures spread trading is based on the idea that we're going to take the same future or two different very two different futures but related futures 
and we're going to go long and short positions to capitalize on a divergence in the price between those two futures. When we think the spread is going to widen between two futures, we're buying the spread. And if we think the spread is narrowing, we're going to sell the spread. There's two types of spread that there's two um, categories of spread that we're going to talk about. Intramarket spreads are the same commodity. I might be trading corn against corn, or I might be trading heating oil against heating oil. That's an intramarket spread, intramarket spread. An intermarket spread are two different but related commodities, like corn and soybeans, or it might be natural gas and crude oil, although those aren't that, even though they're in the same complex, those aren't really correlated enough to do spread trading, but, but that, that's a different topic for a different session. But typically, intramarket futures are, are similar, like, like bonds against T-notes. So you do the 30 against the 10 or the 5 against the 30. Those are intermarket relationships that, that you can do spread trading on. So if we're going to do intermarket spread trading, two different commodities, not the same commodity, we have to normalize the spread in dollars because one is going to have a different point value, the other is going to have a different point value, and we have to be able to calculate the value of a move of the spread. And the way we do that is by normalizing the spread in dollars. And we also may need to adjust the trade size. So we want roughly a 1% move in bonds to be roughly the same 1% move in, in the 10-year or the 5-year. It's never going to be exact, but it doesn't matter because we're actually just trading the spread. So once we get the trade size close, then we can focus on the entries and, and the exits. But, it, but we want to try to adjust that trade size. And, and sometimes certain intramarket spreads are, are sometimes difficult to track because of volatility considerations. So if you think about the 30-year bond versus the 10-year bond, the 30-year bond is much more volatile than the 10-year bond. So in, in other words, if the 30-year bond were to go up 2% today, the 10-year might only go up 1%. So that relation, that consideration may also need to be factored in to adjusting the trade size. One of the benefits of future spread trading is that the margins are much lower for trading. So you can trade the 30-year the bond against the 10-year bond for much less than it would cost in margin to trade either one of them by themselves. And so this is due to the fact that there's, there's much lower volatility risk when you're going long and short two very related futures. So this concept is, is available um, at most brokers, including TradeStation. Uh, you can trade future spreads on our Futures Plus platform. And, and what calculates the margin for all of these things is something called span margining. So the Chicago Board of Trade many, many years ago created this, this system of uh, calculating margin on the fly for any, any position, including futures or options. It's called span margining. And, um, and span margining is what gives us these low, these low margin rates. Okay, so the, the tools that are included here um, are the, the future spread normalization tool. So basically this is a multi-data chart. You put in data one, data two, the two futures, same interval. This indicator will calculate the dollar normalized spread between the two. And you can adjust the trade size. So you might, you might go long one 30 year against two 10 year. Um, things like that. Sometimes what I'll do is I will trade, uh, for example, uh, five of the mini gold against maybe um, uh, against one silver, something like that. So you can you can adjust the trade size, and and it, the indicator will automatically calculate calculate that normalized dollar value. 
The other thing is that it's important to understand what a move in that spread would represent. So that, that, that calculation tool that I showed you earlier with the two yellow horizontal lines, that is included and built into the spread indicator. So when you insert the spread indicator, it calculates the spread. It also puts two lines on your chart so you can measure what the spread is from the current spread to one of these two lines. That's very helpful in, in, in spread trading. And then I also put a moving average on it just to give you an example of how you could apply technical tools uh, to this spread. Um, the thing is that the downside to that, of course, is that you have to program that indicator specifically inside of the same tool. You can't apply an indicator to the spread like you would to a chart. If you want to add something like Bollinger Bands, you have to go into my code and add Bollinger Bands to the code around that value. Not that difficult to do, by the way. Um, everything is open source code, so you, you'll be able to go in and see how I calculate the spread, how I add the moving average, and it won't be that difficult to figure out how to add your analysis to that, that tool. The other thing that I, I'm providing here is a tool that I created called the equivalent position. So basically it looks at the two futures in the chart and it tries to calculate an equivalent position based on the point value. So it might recommend that you change data two from one contract to two contract, or it might say change data one from one contract to three contract, and it will try to normalize the trade size based on the two futures and the point values. And, and finally, the third tool I'm, I'm sharing with you is my multi-data relative performance. So this is a tool that uses multi-time frame analysis to look at which of the two futures is outperforming the other. So when, when data one, which is the long future, is outperforming data two, this will show you that across three different time frames. And so it'll, it'll give you an indication whether you want to buy the spread, whether the spread is widening, or you want to sell the spread, the spread is narrowing. So one of the rules of all of these indicators is that data one is always the symbol you're going long, and data two is always the symbol you're going short. So if you need to adjust that, that's fine. But, but that's the case. In, in the futures world, it, that doesn't really matter too much. You can, you can always buy that spread or short that spread. So just, just keep that in mind. But as far as the indicators are concerned, data one is always long, data two is always short. Okay, so through the middle of the chart here, you can see that is the spread normalized indicator. The yellow line is the spread between the two symbols. So this is December, this is actually September corn against December corn, right? So when the spread is going down, the spread is narrowing. And when the spread is going up, the spread is increasing. So we wanna be short when the spread is going down. We wanna be long when the spread is increasing. There's the blue moving average that you see there. And then of course the two yellow lines allow me to measure uh, what that spread is worth in dollars from where it is right now to where if it moved or not, right? In the bottom left-hand corner is my spread equivalent position indicator. It's just a little line down there that tells you which symbol you need to adjust. So these are both corn. So it's telling me that the ratio is 1.04. That, that means I don't need to change the ratio at all. It's one to one. You can see that here in the data tip on the two yellow lines. So that's the idea. We're going to calculate the dollar normalized value of the two symbols and calculate that spread in dollars. So when I put on this spread, I know exactly in dollars how much my position is up or down. Okay, so this is the knob spread. This is the 30-year against the 10-year. So I have the 30-year bonds up here in data one, the 10-year here in data two. You can see the equivalent position down here is telling me that I need to have data two as 1.28 contracts. Well, obviously you, you can't trade 1.28 contracts, not unless you're doing 128 contracts to get that ratio correct. But I also know that the volatility of the 30 year is greater than the volatility of the 10 year. So I, I might set the trade size here to two and that would be reasonable. And that's what I did here. So I changed the, I changed the input uh, on the indicator to be long one and short two. And you can see that here in the data tip on the right. And I'll show you in TradeStation how you can change that. 
Also, at the bottom of this chart is that spread relative performance indicator I was talking about. It uses three different time frames. It looks at the relative performance over three bars, 13 bars, and 33 bars. You can see that here. And of course, you can change those to whatever you want. And as it goes, um, as data one is outperforming data two, that histogram is going to become blue. And as this data two outperforms data one, or the spread is narrowing, we're going to see that here in red below the zero line. So basically, it's just a measure of, of the relationship between those two symbols over three different time frames. So that indicator in combination with your moving average, or maybe you're going to add Bollinger Bands to this, or Keltner Channels, or some other type of reversion to the mean idea, um, this is just another tool that can, can help you with that. Okay, let's go to TradeStation. So this is the third workspace that uh, is in that zip file. It's called Future Spread Tools. And I have the two charts next to each other. This is uh, bonds versus 10-year, and this is corn versus corn, so you can experiment with, with both of those. I'm just going to expand the bond one here. So here, uh, I'm going to right-click and go to Studies and Edit Study. And uh, here is our normalized indicator. I'm going to click Customize. Here you can see the the equivalent position indicator and the relative performance and you can adjust those inputs here i'm going to just click customize and on the inputs tab here is where i set the ratio of the spread so i'm long 130 year and i'm short 210 years so that's where i would set that up here i can adjust the moving average indicator that's applied to the spread and the rest of these tools here are just related to uh, the the two lines and the and the labels over here based on those calculations just so you can adjust the labels different colors different fonts just to give you some flexibility so future spread trading is an entire discipline all its own uh, there are traders who look at seasonality they look at cycles that look at technical analysis or reversion to the mean ideas around future spreads. It's a lower, it's a lower risk way to trade futures, um, especially if you wanted to experiment with long, short the micros. You could go, you know, long uh, the S and P micro and short the Nasdaq and play that spread. That would be an interesting low cost way to uh, to to dive into futures spread trading get master those skills and then move on to other commodities and, and other types of, of, uh, of futures. So that would be an interesting way to, to look at it. Be sure to check out Masterclass. I think you'll find a lot of great information like this in the channel. It's their live sessions every day. I do Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, technical analysis, strategy trading, easy language. Jesus is in the room all the time, David Russell. So check it out, at least for the 14-day trial, and see if it's something that can help you in your trading um, and, and join our community. It's really, it's been fun so far, and I think you'll enjoy it. So thanks, everybody, for joining me. There's my email address. If uh, you get stuck or you have a question or you have trouble with the download, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you at another upcoming TradeStation event. Have a great evening.